Okay, here's how the problem works. We've got a ruler of a given mass and length that's placed so it's exactly balanced between two spinning cylinders. These cylinders are spinning inward. Um, we're given the coefficient of friction between the ruler and each cylinder. Now, when you pull a, a ruler to one side, you'll discover that it pulls back to the other direction. And when it overshoots in the other direction, it'll shoot back in the original direction, and then it'll continue to oscillate back and forth. Um, whenever we see oscillatory motion, we think, hey, there might be simple harmonic motion there. So let's see if we can figure out, if we can predict the frequency and period of oscillation of this ruler as it goes back and forth. Okay, the first thing we always do whenever we solve a physics problem is we draw a picture. And in this particular case, we have two rollers. This is a front cross-sectional view that are each spinning inward in the same direction. And on top of this, a ruler is can be placed so that it's exactly balanced. But then we displace this ruler, we pull it off to one side, a distance. And I'm going to call this distance that we pull it off center S. Uh, in the problem, we were given things like the length of the ruler. We were given the mass of the ruler. Uh, we were also given the coefficient of kinetic friction as these rollers spin. Um, and in the problem, we might have also been given this distance here. Okay, we've drawn our picture. The next step is to draw a free body diagram. And in our free body diagram, we, of course, have the weight of the ruler pointing downward. And we have two normal forces going up. The normal force of the roller on the left, which I'll call number one, and the normal force of the ruler on the right, which I'll call number two. This one's one. The one on the right is number two. Um, and we know that in the up-down direction, the forces are going to balance out. Um, however, when the ruler is shifted to the right, there'll be a bigger normal force on, on the roller number two because there's more weight on roller number two. Now, because there's more weight on roller number two, that means that there's going to be more friction trying to shoot the ruler in the other direction. There'll still be friction going towards the right due to the number one roller, but as it's centered over number two a little bit more, it means we're going to get more force that way, more friction that way, and that means that there's going to be a net force pointing to the left. So we get a free body diagram that looks something like this. Now step number three is to try to derive an equation. And in this case, we're suspecting that there might be simple harmonic motion here. So the equation that we're trying to find is something that has the form of the simple harmonic motion equation. And whenever we get an equation of this form, then we know that the equation of motion is going to look like this, the a cosine omega t. So we're trying to get an equation of this top form, and then we know that this becomes the equation of motion, but only if we can get an equation of that, that top form. So let's try building some equations out of our free body diagram and see what we get. 
uh, in the i hat direction, we end up getting that mu k n2 subtract mu k n1 is going to equal m a net. And I'm going to rewrite a net as s double dot. Remember that s double dot is another way of saying the derivative of the position, the second derivative of position with respect to time, which we know is acceleration. Um, and in the j hat direction, we're going to end up getting that n1 plus n2 must equal mg, or the weight of the ruler. Now we do have to be a little bit careful of our signs here. If you look at the i hat equation, notice that I define to the left um, as positive and to the right as negative. Okay, so we've got these two equations. We're trying to get the simple harmonic equation out of them. Um, if you look at the um, double dot equation, the first one, it currently says that, um, sorry, let's rewrite it a little bit and let's divide out that mass of the ruler. We're going to get that s double dot is equal to mu k n2 subtract n1 divided by the mass of the ruler. And when we look at this, this isn't yet the simple harmonic equation because, yes, there is an s dot, but there's no s on the right-hand side yet. So that means we need to spend a little bit of time analyzing what's going on with the normal forces. Now, we know that some of the normal forces have to add up to the total weight of the ruler. And we know that when the ruler is shifted to one side, and notice we're shifting it to the right side, we know that the normal force on the right side in this case is going to get to be bigger. And we know that it's going to be a proportionality function. So what I'm going to give you, and I want you to sit down and figure this out, is if you look at how much weight there is on the left side versus the right side, it's going to be some sort of fraction, right here you see a fraction, of the total weight. And on the other ruler, sorry, uh, make, um, uh, as I was going to say, sorry, you've got to be really careful about minus signs here. And if you look at the fractions that I've given here, let's go back and look at the picture. If this S is pulled to the right all the way so that all of the weight is on the second roller, that means that half you'd have moved the ruler halfway over. And when S is equal to one half the length, then notice that n1 becomes zero, which is what we'd expect if the ruler was pulled all the way to the right, and n2 would equal the total weight of the ruler, which again, if the ruler is pulled all the way to the right, then indeed the ruler's on the second roller. So this fraction ends up giving us, uh, this gives us the fraction of how much normal force there is due to each ruler. And now here's a little bit where we have to be careful about signs. We define to the left as positive and to the right as negative. So that really means that this should be a minus here and a minus there. Um, so that a 
negative s gives us the normal force where we expect it to be. Coordinate systems are always a pain in the neck, which is why you should define your coordinate systems right. If I had a little more time to make this video, I might have defined the signs oppositely in the picture, but this is what we are with right now. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our normal 2 and our normal 1 and plug it into our s double dot equation that we've derived up above, and we're going to get that s double dot equals mu k times n2, and n2 is this 1 half l minus s divided by l, um, and notice that there is an mrg out there. I'm going to stick that out here because I know it's going to factor out. And then our n2, or sorry, our n1 is going to be a 1 half L minus <laughs> S. And I'm sorry, this one on the left should have been a plus because we had a minus and a minus divided by L. Okay, this is kind of messy. Uh, let's try see if we can do some algebraic simplification. Uh, notice that we've got a common denominator, which means that this one half L is going to cancel out with that one because we can smash the two fractions together. And we end up getting that S double dot is going to equal mu k times 2s over l times mrg. Let's go back to that equation for a simple harmonic motion that we're looking for. Um, that equation again is looks like this. And if we do some rearranging of what we've been deriving, we get that S double dot is going to equal, um, notice that there's a minus sign that I missed up there again. Sorry guys. That becomes a mu k with a 2 with an m ruler g divided by l all times s, where I've done some algebraic manipulation. Now, let's take a look at what we have. Indeed, we've got the s double dot, we have the s, and we have a minus sign with everything in between being a constant. So, what we do is we write yay, we've discovered simple harmonic motion in this situation. This means that we know that the equation of motion for the ruler is going to be S of t is going to equal a cosine omega t where omega is going to be the square root of everything between the minus sign and the s. So this becomes our angular frequency. Um, we remember that the period is going to be 2 pi over the angular frequency if you were looking for the period. These are all numbers that we can measure or that were given in the problem and we can find the frequency of oscillation.